And hello everybody, it is Monday the 8th of February and we have another screencast on our uh, discussion of Between the Wars. This screencast will be useful for both the campus students and Edmentum students and there is a Google assignment that is attached. I will post this to your classrooms. For the campus students it is required and is due on Wednesday morning. For the Edmentum students, uh, you may submit it any time this week for an extra credit score. <coughs> so, tensions uh, are still present in Europe after World War I. Uh, it's mostly caused by the overwhelming impact of the Treaty of Versailles and the interests of the partner nations. Uh, the League of Nations at first offers some promise, but it fails in the long run to establish peace and tranquility in Europe. One of the reasons uh, for this um, weakness of the League of Nations is the Allies have different goals for peace. France wants to build up their defense and they want to punish Germany uh, with Versailles and really make sure Versailles is enforced. They want to keep Germany weak politically and economically. They build the Maginot Line, which is a series of forts that's done at great expense and it's really an amazing structure for its time, but they base it on the model of trench warfare in World War I and they forgot the way that Germany was attacking at the end of the war, which will be the model that they will improve upon uh, in World War II called Blitzkrieg. England wants to rebuild their colonial empire, which is in shambles. It's weak. It's being threatened at every place. They all are pushing for independence, and they recognize England is weak, and they have an opportunity for self-rule. They also want to rebuild trade because their <coughs> economy is really trashed. The other key thing is they think that the Treaty of Versailles is too harsh on Germany, and they recognize or they believe that Germany should be strong and the reason is they're very leery of the Soviet Union becoming a powerhouse what's going on in Russia and they don't want France to become too dominant in Europe so they feel that Germany since it's located between the two of them can become a counterbalance and make sure that France and Russia do not get too strong and let England concentrate on their overseas empire and not invest too heavily in Europe the Soviet Union, well, they're licking their wounds from the Civil War. They're trying to consolidate their gains, uh, really install communism as the political and social uh, theory in Russia, and they also want to spread communism in Europe, and they're planning that also. The United States, although they're not Europe, they're such a powerhouse, and they're important to this period because they're building up power. Uh, they've become very powerful, but they don't want to get involved in Europe anymore. They're concerned much more about the United States and control of the Western Hemisphere, which is um, obviously North America and Canada, yes, it's a Commonwealth nation, it's a part of the United Kingdom, but their our ties to Canada are so strong. And then to Central America and South America. America really wants to make sure that they are the king the kings of the Western Hemisphere. Now the League of Nations does enjoy some success. Uh, it's formed in Geneva, Switzerland. And um, it has some success in the 1920s. Uh, treaties settled border disputes at Locarno. They, all these new nations in Germany were in conflict, and they, they did a good job in, in settling the borders. And then the Kellogg-Briand Pact basically is a very uh, inspirational document. It renounces war. It talks about uh, chemical weapons being used and banning them. And it says war can't be a political solution anymore. Uh, and a lot of nations sign it. They also uh, try disarmament. They want to reduce the amount of, uh, of military force, and they do sign treaties. Uh, the United States, Japan, uh, England, etc. They all sign treaties limiting the navies. The armies are not changed, um, and there is some gains in that. But the League of Nations is fundamentally weak, and the biggest weakness is one: the United States doesn't join, and the United States is a disinterested party who would have been very effective in the League of Nations. There's also no way to enforce policies if, an, uh, if a nation says, we're not doing it. The League of Nations has nothing to enforce it with. It's basically nations saying, we're going to be nice with each other. In the 1930s, Japan and then later Italy, they defy the League when they uh, attack uh, China. Japan attacks China, and Italy launches campaigns in Africa. And they're not held in check. The League says, you can't do that. And Japan and, and Italy say, well, stop us with your army. Oh, you don't have an army, so really just need to shut up. Uh, a nation can go rogue and can't be stopped. This causes the League of Nations to lose all credibility as is shown in this political cartoon 
Egypt, where the League of Nations is lying down. It's centered in Geneva. That's where it's centered. Geneva is in Switzerland, which is a neutral country. So they don't have a stake in what's going on. They just want peace. Here's the welcome mat, and Japan is walking all over. Here's the League of Nations. She's lying flat, and Japan is walking all over her by attacking Manchuria and China. So Japan launches a war, and the League of Nations just lies down, sees this league. And basically over here, number four, someone's trying to touch up the League of Nations, say, oh, she's beautiful, she looks great, she's all made up and perfect, when really she's just a doormat. So that's the cartoon, and you're going to have to answer that and submit it. And there are a couple of questions. Now, this is the extra credit part, or your required part if you're in uh, the campus class. Describe the cartoon, and you can use the text, or you can just use this screencast or the lecture that we'll have today. And answer the questions. What are some of the ways that the League of Nations is effective in the 1920s? And they do have some successes, but what's the fatal flaw of the League? Why can't they, why eventually are they ended up walk, being walked all over on? All right, so that's what you can uh, work on today. And this is a short screencast. Have a great day.